It doesn't take one of these to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of times we get our witness confused for our um, our personality. You know, so many of us Christians feel that we have to have the extroverted, outgoing personality to be able to witness. And you all know that's not the case. All it takes is being a witness. You know, the Bible clues us in on a few things uh, when it comes to witnessing and evangelizing, one of which is found in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send harvesters into the field. Now, when we think of a field, we think of farming. You may, in this example, think of maybe grapes in a vineyard or wheat in a, in a beautiful plain, a field that's flowing with the heads, going back and forth in the wind. Whatever you envision in the harvest, Jesus gave the example that we are to very simply just go into the harvest field and start working on one grain of wheat at a time, one grape at a time. And you know, my wife had a dream a while back and the dream had to do with a vineyard and in it were grapes that were in all stages of decay and rotting and it was making her uneasy, nervous, frustrated that these grapes that were getting old and wrinkly and rotting hadn't yet been harvested. And it made her so burdened. When she shared that dream with me, that scripture in Matthew came to light. Because here's the thing we have to know. Every harvest left unharvested, it will die and it will go to no good. It will just go blah. It'll go bad. Jesus gave you and I a commission to go into the harvest field and to simply work the harvest. You know, working the harvest isn't always quick. It isn't always easy. I'm a farm kid from Alabama. I've done some of the most labor-intensive stuff you can do when it comes to harvesting crops, and it's a process. There is one crop that we do that required us to go into fields and literally take off the leaves off of every single stalk in that field. And, and the, the cane that we raised, it was up to 14 feet tall. Can you imagine me just having to bend that cane stalk over and tear off all the leaves? Then we'd have to take machetes, cut it down by hand. We would have to line up the heads, which were just big old heads of seeds, and chop them off and load it up and then it was ready to be taken to the grinder and we would put the cane in the grinder it would squeeze out the juice send it down to the pan and it would start cooking it would start purifying and start bubbling up with heat and all you would see was the smoke and it was amazing because this blazing furnace was purifying the cane juice and turning it into sorghum syrup harvesting is a process and if you're watching this video, you have been invited to be one of our harvest coordinators. A harvest coordinator is basically a champion of the cause. A harvest coordinator goes and invites their friends, your, your people you go to church with, your Christian friends. You invite them into the Harvest Challenge. The Harvest Challenge is a six-week program where for two weeks, we're challenging every single harvester in our church to pray for four people, four people to pursue when it comes to an invite to the church and to the kingdom of God. Our purpose is to encourage every single person to create pathways for non-church friends, business associates, neighbors, and family members to come to a tabernacle big day and at that big day, the gospel of Christ is going to be presented in a unique way, and the opportunity for salvation will be there. So for those first two weeks, you're praying for those two pro four prospects. The next two weeks, we're doing an act of kindness. You know, the Bible says that the gifts of man will bring him before great kings. 
that word gifts isn't just your talents and your skills, but hey, it's your gifts, it's your kind acts, your acts of service, your, your gift cards, your fresh baked cookies, pies, bringing your neighbors over for a dinner. These are things that kind of get you room with people, right? It, we're also taught that it's the kindness of the Lord that leads man to repentance. Whenever you're kind to someone, you're showing a fruit of the Spirit. You're showing kindness. You're, you're showing God's hands reaching out to your non-saved friends and family members. And you're encouraging them in the love of Christ. So the first two weeks of the Harvest Challenge, we're praying for four people. The second two weeks, we're doing an act of kindness. The final two weeks, we're finding opportunities to see at what point is those are those four people are they ready to be harvested are they ready to be invited to church who knows maybe one of those four people might be ready to receive the gospel of jesus christ and receive him as lord those four prospects are going to be at different stages of the harvest and that's where you as a harvest coordinator have to help others see okay you know what maybe they're not ready to be invited to church yet but why don't you invite them back to your house? Make room for conversation for the Holy Spirit to be able to use you to speak to others. So a harvest coordinator helps us with the harvest challenge. It's a six week process. The big day on our first harvest challenge will be Easter. Easter is April the 16th. We've got the sunrise service and we've got the uh, regular service that will follow that at our church campus. Easter is a good time for people to be open to the invite to church, especially our non-saved friends. We've got some really cool things happening for kids that day, so you can promote it that way. However you want to do that, we have the opportunity. So if you're watching this video, thank you for listening. Consider being a Harvest Coordinator and talk to me really soon. I email, call me, I'll put my contact information. Um, out there, it's at the church office, it's at the church website. But prayerfully consider being a harvest coordinator. All right, love you guys. Bye bye.